What's going on guys, Vic BP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this episode, we're gonna introduce a new addition to the arsenal, ladies and gentlemen, the Touch Edition. So this one was a really quick project, it took me about maybe two weeks to complete. We're gonna go over what exactly this thing is. This thing, as my wife says it, is basically a huge iPad. It is a 23 inch touchscreen gaming machine strictly used to play touchscreen games. So what I'm gonna do in this video is that we're gonna basically break it into parts. First, we're gonna talk about an overview, exactly what is this thing, what are we looking at, what does it do and all that. Then we'll talk about some options as far as like, you know, stands, I have two different stands that you could choose from. And then we're gonna talk about pros and cons to a couple of things when it comes to any build of mine. With that, let's start with the overview. I know you guys don't like self mode, so I'm gonna put the camera down and let's take a look at the touch edition. All right guys, so let's take this out real quick. Again, a quick overview on this. Basically, again, this is a touch screen gaming machine. Uh, basically what I was aiming for on this is basically like your old school mega touch. Uh, you can find them in like bars or even at like regular like laundromats that used to have them. And you would play like, you know, trivia games and casino games, uh, slot machines and all that. So that is the objective with this. It is strictly touch screen. So the big thing is just keep in mind that it's supposed to be a touch screen gaming machine. You won't find Street Fighter V on this. This is strictly touchscreen gaming. Try to think of games that you play like on your cell phone, which is a little hidden secret that we'll go in later on as far as what this could do. But basically keep in mind that this is a touchscreen gaming machine. Quick overview on this. This is a 23 inch touchscreen all in one PC. Uh, this has like an ergo stand on it, so it could tilt, it could go up and down. It's pretty cool, I actually enjoy the stand on this. Uh, basically when you do launch up the PC, you'll get the little screen. On the bottom right here, we'll have the little program and you literally get right into the whole program. This is running a program called STFE. It's a front end, it's a very simple front end. The whole thing is customized by me as far as the artwork. Everything that you see here is totally custom by me. I have it basically set up by categories. So you're gonna find trivia games, you'll find some fun games, you'll find card games, word games, even casino virtual slots. And then I even went into the next step basically adding PC games such as Big Fish, Pop Cap, and Game House and a couple of PC games on its own, like Monopoly and Angry Birds and all that. Um, also, another thing I did add was Pinball. This does play Pinball FX 2 and 3. Huge deal, it was amazing to see that. And the real last thing is that this is running an emulator called Bluestacks. Bluestacks emulates an Android phone. So basically, the number of games on this could be endless. Any game that you really have like on your cell phone, you will be able to download it onto this. So I do have, for example, Call of Duty Mobile on this, um, Clash of Clans, uh, the Mario Kart game, a lot of stuff, it's, it's really crazy. And again, it is strictly touchscreen games. You don't need a mouse or a keyboard. You will have a mouse and a keyboard, they'll hand there, we'll give you one. It's just, you know, just in case. There are some games that need, you know, the mouse to like select start game but then in the game, you could use only your fingers basically. So now again, just to recap on the overview, is a 23 inch all-in-one PC. Exactly how this is sitting right now, it is totally functional and no need to worry about anything as far as keyboards. Again, that was my main objective, was to make it kind of like a mega touch. You should be able to come up to it, touch it, play a game, exit a game, play a game, exit a game, you could even shut off the system from here. So it's really awesome. Again, 23 inch Game Case Arcades Touch Edition. All right guys, so real quick, I think we could do kind of an overview, just a real quick thing, kind of booting up and all that. I'll be making separate videos on each genre and all that, but just to give you a look at it. So we're on the desktop right now. We have our program. You basically just double tap onto it and it'll load up the front end. At the bottom, we have all the genres. So you have trivia, fun zone, we got slot machines, the PC games, the pinball stuff and all that. So you can basically just navigate through it. You know, there's left and right, there's like five or six pages on each game, on each genre, I should say, and everything. So I'm going to Fun Zone and I'll load up some Bejeweled. So literally you just tap on it and it'll load up. Again, keep in mind, this, the objective to this was supposed to be like a Mega Touch. I grew up on the Mega Touch, so it's pretty cool. Again, all touch screen stuff. If you don't know what a Mega Touch is, look it up, it's pretty awesome. So this right now is basically an emulator that thinks that we have to put money into it. And as you can see, it put money in it for us. So. This is actually a pop cap game, which is a PC game, but it was converted into kind of where you have to pay for it to play it. So as you can see, we could play it and it's pretty cool. And again, all touch screen. So I used to be great at this game. I used to be like amazing at this game. 
And again, that's basically the gist of it, all touchscreen stuff. So now the only kind of thing about this specific game and this specific emulator and this kind of genre is that right now we have to wait for the timer to finish to exit this game. Again, keep in mind, this was a game that you would literally go up to a system, put like a dollar in to play this specific game. You wouldn't be able to change the game, you would have to actually put more money in to change the game. So right now we literally have to wait for the timer to run out. While it's going up, you know, I'm just gonna shoot the breeze and talk. Keep in mind again, this is supposed to be strictly touch. I'm trying to stay away from the keyboard and mouse, although some of the casino stuff, you do need the keyboard and mouse, and I'll show you an example of it. But I would say about 75% of the casino games is all easy, easily recognized with the touch screen. So you don't really need a mouse and a keyboard. You press play, and then here now, like I said, you have a bunch of slot machines to pick from. So you could just pick on one, double tap it. It kind of gives you a brief overview on it. And again, IDT, this is awesome. This works with like fingers. You don't need the mouse and keyboard for this. The only time you need a keyboard is to put your name into it. And basically now we have our screen so we could change like our bet amount. We have max bet. Let's see how the first spin goes. I never win anything. And I never win anything. <laughs> but as you can see, you can literally play around with it. You could spin the wheel. It's really cool. I mean, for me personally, I'm not too much into slot machines, but it's awesome to see all the slot machines here. Come on, third time's a charm. Gotta give me something for the viewers. Nothing. <laughs> now what's cool about these type of games is that there's basically, you have to kind of find it, but there's like little buttons where it says like game options. So you could press that and then go back to the main menu where you could kind of pick another slot machine if you wanted and exit. And like, for example, like Hoyle Casino will let you choose different games and such. So again, it's gonna give us a little bit of a load in. I have it set to full screen on the slot machine. Let's see if this game gives us a little bit better luck. We got something? We got something, yes, there we go. Right, so now again, you could literally exit out to so go back to other games. And the big thing is like on the corners, you'll find somewhere where it kind of gives you like a home button and then a quit. That's it, you're back to the home screen again. You could keep playing your games. The real cool thing I'll show you real quick is pinball. I was very shocked that I got it, but pinball FX3 and two actually work amazing on the touch screen. It's actually designed for it, it's really cool. You literally use your thumbs, put your hands on the sides and literally left and right on it. And also what's cool is the plunger, how that works. So again, all touch, there is sound that had the volume low. We could do single player, uh, we could load up some random game, Back to the Future. And again, same thing, you can see there's only two pinball programs, but in it there's like 40 tables, so figure like 80 tables. It's really cool, but I do like how they did incorporate the plunger. So I did play this game before. I'm gonna do a new game. And again, as you can see, like we could change our camera angles here and all that. So I'm gonna skip that. And what they did basically is that you have to aim for the far right side and you basically just have to drag and shoot. So literally just drop the plunger and now using left and right, we are literally playing pinball. Like who would have thought, right? <laughs> now it's cool, again, this is a PC game so you could even like change the camera angles. And again, usually when I have it like on my bar top builds, like this is actually set to buttons, but for you to use like, it knows like the size, that's amazing. So we can now exit out. Again, this is a PC game so I could literally exit out of this, exit out, bring me back, there's a bunch of tables, and it will basically bring us back into our front end where you can pick all the games. As far as exiting the system, it's very simple. It's a very big power button. That brings you back to the desktop and then you can shut down the computer from there. What's cool about this also is that you could use this as like a regular PC. Um, luckily, the stuff that's in this isn't too crazy. This also, for example, this specific unit, which you'll see as I talk about pros and cons for units, this actually has like a webcam to it. So you could probably load up Facebook and use it you know, for families to you know, video call and Skype and all that. So it's really cool. That's why I never set um, exit the program to shut down the computer, same with my hyperspin build, only because you might want to do some more stuff with it, you could go online with it and such. So it's really cool. There you have it, the overview. It wasn't quick, but the Touch Edition Game Case Arcades. Now real quick, I'll talk about the pros and cons, as I already know that some people are gonna ask me, hey Vic, how much, how much, how much? So you have to understand that my job that I feel is to give people a very affordable route and to keep it affordable, there is some sacrifices you have to face. For example, on my Hyperson builds, we literally have the Budget Beast, which is a Dell Optiplex. 
compared to like the 40 terabyte build, which is current gen computer stuff. That's the big thing I have to keep in mind when it comes to pros and cons. So right now I'm gonna discuss this main thing. This is my first unit. This is literally the test unit. And I do give out my test units. I don't really like, you know, upsell the test unit because this is the test unit. This is the first time ever. I just tried this and this is the proof of concept and it works. The real way for me to even test it is that I do get the cheapest of cheapest hardware. So for example, right now you're looking at a HP Elite One 800 all in one. This is a refurbished model. This is refurbished. Just like my Dell Optiplexes that are refurbished, they're refurbished. This right here, I don't know how old it is. It came with Windows 8. I upgraded it to Windows 10. I upgraded the RAM sticks on it. As again, I found somebody on eBay. I personally bought this specific touchscreen model for about $225. And again, this is budget. It's a budget thing. And with that, you have to keep in mind that it does budget things. What I mean by that, I'll show you real quick, like the boot time, literally from plugging it into turning it on, it's not like the 40 terabyte current gen stuff with SSDs and it boots in five seconds. This in all honesty takes about three minutes to boot from start to finish. So keep that in mind. When you do message me and say, hey Vic, how much, how much, how much? I understand that yes, we wanna, you know, I personally wanna try to get it to you as the most cost effective and least expensive, but with that, you must understand the sacrifices that you are giving up. Luckily with this type of emulation and the stuff on it, it doesn't really require too much kind of PC power. It doesn't need high RAM and such, but I do have some stuff in this that does need high RAM stuff, mostly related to BlueStacks. BlueStacks is an emulator that basically kind of emulates a Samsung Galaxy App Store. So I'm gonna load up, for example, like Call of Duty Mobile, that needs RAM. It, 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 needs, it needs it, not to mention also BlueStacks takes like a minute to load up. So please keep that in mind when it comes to pros and cons. This right here is what I would consider as the Budget Beast Touch Edition. Again, it is a refurbished HP Elite One 800. You could look online and try to find you know, the differences on it. This specific unit I got didn't come with a stand. And honestly, it just came with a screen, the keyboard and the mouse, it was wired and such. So keep that in mind. Um, I had to buy a stand. Uh, this does not have Wi-Fi built into it, so I did have to get a $15 Wi-Fi dongle. Do you need this? No, but if you are gonna plan to use BlueStacks, you do need this. And again, without this, I wouldn't be able to play Call of Duty Mobile on this. So keep that in mind, is now you're adding stuff to it. Not to mention real quick, the base that I got this. Now keep in mind, with this, this was delivered to me with four gigs of RAM, and it was just too slow, it wouldn't work. I had to bump it up to 16 gigs. That 16 gigs alone was another $100. So keep that in mind, again, budget PC refurbished for about 225, now I'm adding the stand, now I'm adding the Wi-Fi, now I'm adding the, the RAM sticks. It adds up, so just please keep that in mind. This, again, to me is considered the budget beast of the Touch Edition. What would be like the current gen stuff is literally like grabbing an all-in-one from like Best Buy, current gen stuff, and honestly those run for like 900 bucks, which I think is too much for this. So keep that in mind. Again, I will give you the option if you want, like the souped up one, but I think in all honesty, the budget touch edition is awesome, but you have to keep in mind that there is pluses and minuses. Now real quick, I'm gonna literally boot up the system. I'm gonna do a counter, three, two, one, go. Literally press and you're gonna see how long it takes to boot. So again, keep in mind, we are using a budget beast touch edition on this a refurbished HP Elite One 800. Again, you'll see what I said before, the pricing on what I paid for it and such, that's you have to keep in mind. I know for a fact that you probably have to give this maybe about three to four minutes to boot, fully boot. Just because it goes into desktop does not mean that it's fully ready. So as you can see right now, we got the admin going, it's going, it's going. So when I first got this again, it came with Windows 8. Um, I just bumped it up to Windows 10. It also came with four gigs of RAM, which it just, it didn't cut it. Four gigs did not, did not cut it, especially to play like pinball and especially for blue stack. So we had to bump up the RAM to 16 gigs. So even though right now we are on the desktop, I know for a fact it's, it's not really ready. I have the, the, the taskbar set to kind of minimize, um, basically like, you know, it should hide. And now it did, but the big thing also I kind of could personally tell is that usually there's a firewall message here, but for kicks, I'm gonna start it here. Not too bad, not too bad. 
So as you can see, we're in it, awesome. The main thing I did want to show you was blue stacks. The load time on blue stacks, it's not brutal, it's just the program has to load up. I know for a fact right now that Windows is not totally still fully booted just yet, but basically right now blue stacks is gonna overscreen this and uh, that's when we'll know it's, it's launching and such. So there we go. Perfect, we can do the maximize here. BlueStacks is cool, it's just for some reason it doesn't always set to full screen. I don't know why, especially even when you pick a game because each game has different resolutions on it and such. But as you can see, we got our bar. And we just gotta let it load. Now real quick, I didn't do it, but I'll put it in real quick. This is the Wi-Fi dongle. The, also the all-in-one PC, it, it had a lot of stuff. There's like, there's USBs here, there's USBs underneath, but that's the best way to put the Wi-Fi dongle. Um, as you can see, it's a big antenna and such. The only real reason you would want that is if you do play BlueStacks. Um, for example, it's really cool. You could literally play Call of Duty Mobile. Um, I, I've played it a couple of times. I suck at it, but it's, it's pretty cool. But again, with that, you could also use it as your regular, you know, work PC. As you can see, our firewall and network thing went up. I've disabled that so many times. It's Windows 10 just reverts it back. It's very annoying. But as you can see now, we're in BlueStack. So I'm gonna hit the timer and we'll see how long it took just for BlueStacks to load and such. So here, for example, you're gonna see it again. I'm gonna load up, let's say, Call of Duty. So it's literally like, you know, on your phone. As you can see, it even gives you like kind of controls here, but we're gonna go into blue stacks and such later on. But I kind of want to show you how long it takes just from boot to get into a game of Call of Duty, I guess. And like I said, the only reason I want to show you this is because again, I do want to give people an affordable route. This is what you get for affordable route. A refurbished HP, just like my Dell Optiplexes. Um, you could tell me that you could put an SSD in it. If you want me to change the hard drive to an SSD, that's fine. Get ready to pay more. Same thing with the RAM. I have this $225 PC that I bought came with four gigs of RAM. Uh, you needed, and, and no Wi-Fi. So I needed to buy that and I needed to buy 16 gigs of RAM. Again, same thing, I'm gonna let the clock run and we're gonna see how long it takes to load. So now some people be like, oh man, Vic, the, the computer crashed, what's happening? No, it's just taking its time to boot up because this is not a high-end current gen PC. And it's not too bad. I mean, it's got i5 in it. It's, a, it's an i5, 16 gigs of RAM. You know, that, that's the main stuff that you need. But again, keep in mind, I think this is maybe a three or four year old unit. I don't know when they made this Elite One 800. My main focus for me getting this was that it was a touchscreen all in one. That was the main selling point. The other downside that kind of stinks, but it's how it is. This does have um, controls here, like for your brightness. The only thing that kind of stinks though is that the volume doesn't work. I did wish that, that it would work, um, but a lot of people say that this Elite One, you get that. On a regular modern all-in-one that you could get at like Best Buy, I'm pretty sure it works. But basically you gotta think, this originally had like Windows XP on it, or Windows Vista, and then updating it and the drivers didn't probably go through. I've searched for drivers for this, it just doesn't work. But to kind of alleviate that, you kind of get a keyboard that has the volume rocker switch on it, and you're set. I don't want to speed up the video. I was going to speed it up. I shot this like twice. I was going to speed up the video, like, but I figured it's much better for you to actually physically see it. Like, I'm going to let it go until we actually get into a game. And the other thing we can think about also is that it's, it is an emulator. I mean, it is BlueStacks. So is it, is it BlueStacks that's doing it slow? I don't think so, because I've played BlueStacks on like my Dell Optiplex and it runs, it shoots, it's very quick. So I know for a fact it's the PC. You get what you pay for, keep that in mind. That's always my motto, you get what you pay for. So now that we're in, I'm not gonna buy anything. So it's cool, this right now again, we're loading up Call of Duty Mobile on BlueStacks. 
basically it's loading just like how your phone would be and it's cool literally uses the joystick here and then you know you literally have to tap to shoot uh it's really meant like for a handheld but it's, it actually works uh pretty nicely on this so for example i'll pick my loadout and as you can see i'm not good at this i'm good at the like regular give me a controller for call of duty but not with this <laughs> But again, literally, it's cool. You're literally playing. Oh. Now somebody did comment and say like, hey Vic, this doesn't look comfortable. I've never played Call of Duty Mobile, so I don't know what it's gonna look like. But, oh, shooting a teammate, shooting a teammate. Reload. Oh. I mean, there you guys have it. Again, Blue Stacks, Call of Duty Mobile. <laughs> so now, real quick, aside from the stands, a couple of add-ons. You could do wireless keyboard and mouse. This specific unit came with a wired keyboard and mouse. You could do any wireless keyboard and mouse, that's easy. But also, the other option is for the Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, basically, you could use this mostly for Blue Stacks. Again, Blue Stacks will emulate your phone. So playing a game like Call of Duty Mobile, you would want a, a Wi-Fi dongle. Also remember, you could use this as your regular PC for Facebook and Skype and such. So if you did want to do that, a Wi-Fi dongle is great. Any Wi-Fi dongle, this one came from Amazon for like 15 bucks. Wi-Fi dongles are very easy to find along with the USB keyboards and mice. Hey guys, so here we have the other stand compared to like the Ergo arm. As you can see, this thing is much taller. Uh, the downside is that there is no, not much tilt on this to go up especially if you're gonna stand on it, that's the max tilt. But the only advantage to this is because it goes vertical. So just real quick, I have um, blue stacks on. Also, we got the Wi-Fi dongle out. I'm gonna slide this over so I don't hit the wall. But basically, we were playing some Mario Run. As you can see, this is normal landscape mode. But with blue stacks, you could go vertical. And boom, now we literally have some vertical action going on. So it's up to you. Only in all honesty, the Blue Stacks app would go vertical. Nothing else. No, we can't do pinball vertical. There's no way to do it. So Blue Stacks is the only way. So if you play a lot of apps that are vertical, which I don't really see much, like Super Mario is really the only one I thought of. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty cool. The stand is pretty solid. Um, it does sometimes tend to lean to the right a little bit, but for right now, it's pretty good. And honestly, it doesn't take that much effort to go from vertical uh, to horizontal, but you do have to go right here on blue stacks and you must change the orientation on it. It's pretty cool. That's another stand. Again, like I said, it's just up to you. It does have to be, as you can see, the clearance that we do get, it must be this high, which is the highest point of the stand. So it's pretty cool. I'm not too sure how you guys feel about it. You'll let me know. But again, blue stacks is the only game or the only emulator that would ever go vertical. So to me personally, I'd rather do the Ergo arm. It's more compact than what it was really meant for compared to this one. But it's pretty cool. What an idea. There you guys have it. Game Case Arcade's The Touch Edition.